Welcome back. So Philip asked if I would mind eating this on YouTube. No problem, Philip. Ow. All right, let's see what we can do with this. It looks like there was some kind of compression, like a JPEG compression. When you say files and send them to me, do it as a PNG. PNG. It'll come out better. So just super quick. Um, the sky is really cool, but what I would probably do is uh, kind of have, let me show you on a new layer. Can I have all of these lines almost like uh, connect maybe a little bit? Um, it might just be a little bit more visually pleasing. I don't mean, I didn't actually mean connect. What I meant is point at each other. Cause you see how this one's like pointing upwards and this one's pointing this way. Uh, I think, I, I, this is, I don't really think it matters too much, but whatever, just, I kind of like it a little bit more like that. That was a really minor thing. So I like this moon here and how you have the lighting on the trees, but I would do that in a few more places, not just there, even all the way over here on this side, if we added some of that lighting on the edges. It would help emphasize the the reflection coming from the moon. You could do the same thing here on this uh, smoke or this cloud. You can have some of that lighting, um, not too much, but just a little bit on that there. Now, I think this is a nighttime scene and I do like the green water. However, I think I'm gonna make it a little bit bluer and a little bit darker. And by doing this, let me increase the tolerance, maybe like five. By doing this, it'll help kind of emphasize that it's uh, nighttime. And maybe because we have the green trees here, that maybe this needs to be even bluer, you know? Hold on, I kinda wanna see what it'll look like if it was a little bit purpley. That, I think, has better color theory. I like this uh, minor detail here for the, for the wood. I think that, you know, just work on this a little bit more and give it some more of those, uh, some some more of those lines for the wood this blue now doesn't match so let me just pick this do something a little bit a little more like that maybe we need to make this like 10 let's see okay yeah and then i'm going to turn contiguous on i mean and then i'm going to turn contiguous off and now it'll affect all the colors in the entire canvas that are of that shade I think the silhouette here is fine, but I wouldn't go all the way black. So maybe have it be like um, dark blue or dark green, you know, something like that. Okay, so those are some minor tweaks. Let's move on to the next artwork. Now this one's pretty darn good. If you want me to critique your artwork, follow and DM me on Twitter or join the Discord. There's a link in the description. Check out this sweet drawing by Sweet Cider. I like that shading. Okay, and let me pick something from here to critique. Whoa, that's pretty good. You know what? I'm gonna take on the challenge and, <laughs> and critique this. These two pieces of wood here, they're a very similar color. So something that I would maybe try, let me make this uh, a little bit bigger to show you guys. Something that I would maybe try, and this isn't necessary, let me duplicate this just in case I change my mind, is I would maybe give this a purple shade or just some other, or just some other color, give, give it some other hue. So the way I like to do that is I like to lower the opacity really, really low and then um, click on it there. And now I can do it again. Wait, hold on, let me turn contiguous on so we can compare. No, actually, actually, I want to have that off. <laughs> so I clicked it here once, twice. Okay, and I think twice is good. I can click it on here once, twice. I think once was good there. I can click it on here once, let's try twice. Okay, and now you might not really get why I did that. Oh, let me also do it there. Oops, that color is used over here. Whatever. I think, oh, I can turn contiguous off. There. And there. Okay, so the reason why I made that purple, added a different hue to it, is to help differentiate that it's two different pieces of wood. And what I mean by that is you see how there's a metal, piece of metal here and here? This part, I'm assuming this part is not the exact same piece of wood. If we look at this here, it kind of looks like there's one piece of wood with two metal rings, right? But this chunk and this chunk is so much brighter that it kind of looks like it's getting some kind of weird lighting on it while still being wood. 
So maybe I would change the material there or change the color there. Maybe, maybe, okay? It's just a recommendation. Maybe I would make it uh, a little bit blue or a little bit red just to make it uh, uh, less of a, the color of the wood. Then I love that there is a, that there's a highlight even in the crevices here, but I would extend this a lot more. I think you started doing the, uh, doing it great, but I, I would do it a lot more. Maybe even some other sections, like check this out, um, near maybe near this edge as well. Yeah, yeah, that's looking good. It starts looking like it has, it has more detail in it and, and more shading. And then something that I think you really gotta do is, um, let's see, I think I can use this tool here, is shade this entire um, handle a lot more. So I'm using the, uh, where's the polygon lasso? That's the rectangle one. Is this the polygon? Yeah, there's a the polygon lasso tool. I'm gonna drag across this entire handle. All right, click there and then um, there. Okay, whatever, something like that. Okay, whatever, something like that. And now I'm gonna take this brown and I'm gonna paint bucket these areas here. Another thing I could do, also do is oh that's the same shade as oh i gotta i gotta get a different shade there so oh wait that's too dark isn't it yeah it's too dark um just a little bit darker tiny tiny bit darker okay there we go so i'm gonna shade i'm shading half of this handle and um you know you could also do it in this part I think you guys get that get the um, get the idea and I could have done it harsher but now it'll make the handle look a lot rounder and I did it I think too far into the middle it would have probably been better to do it maybe like here you know what I mean um, I shouldn't have split it down the middle that, that was too far too far inward uh, and then another thing you can do that's similar to that is you can also add a highlight on the opposite side. So the highlight would be, you know, this a little bit brighter and I would maybe make it a really thin line that goes across like that. And you can do the same thing in the metal. So if I didn't shade the metal here, but here, I'll just show you real quick. We can take this line, drag it down like that. You could even do it here, maybe something like this. And now it has now that metal has a highlight, and it can even be broken up. It doesn't have to be a, 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 a you know a full line, even something like uh, like that. That's a little bit harsh of a of a. This is a bit harsh of a highlight. It could be lighter, but um, I think you guys get the point. And then over here, let me get this a little bit darker, and this right here. I think I would shade this right here. And now that just makes the handle look a lot rounder. You guys see that? Same thing, oops. Same with down here. I would shade that to make it a little bit darker. And then this color could be could be a lot darker because it'll help, oops, let me turn the tolerance <laughs> back to zero. Um, by making that outline part darker, it'll emphasize, it kind of, Kind of becomes a uh, a shading in itself. I like using outline for for shading. So here you got it, but on these other sections, I don't see it. So I, I would do the same here. You know, I would, I would add something like like an outline that's darker but not black, and it it'll make that piece kind of just look a little bit more shaded. And you can also use that outline to kind of help emphasize that the object is protruding. So here it almost acts like a shadow. You see how it separated those two um, parts a little bit better? Um, or you could just have a shadow, which you're doing right here. This is fantastic right here. Underneath it, without outline, you created a higher contrast by having a shadow underneath that. That is fantastic. Love this technique right here as well. Um, adding this shadow underneath is, is fantastic. It's, I love it. Okay, so now for this piece, I love these highlights going across, but I think you could do it across the entire axe. A couple things I would do a little bit different is I do think you need another shade here that's just a little bit darker and 
um, it would go maybe from here to to there you see how that now separates those objects just a little bit better and I would probably use it you know from like here to here just a couple of couple of other uh, other places may maybe um, do it on that side as well and if this if you wanted to separate this a little bit more adding a darker color in there would also help emphasize emphasize that it could also be used to shade these things I don't know exactly what these are they look, kind of look like they're sticking out but I think if you had a line here it would make them look like they're sticking out even more you see that all right so for this piece right here I think that some shading on this would look great and maybe it doesn't need to be completely straight sometimes I like to do something um, you know like freehand like this and now let's uh, add that in there yeah you see that it's kinda, <laughs> I like it, I like it but I would go very very subtle with it this is this is too much I think something really subtle like this like that subtle would look pretty good um, since I was freehanding it we could actually probably uh, do something like that and uh, I think it being bigger would look uh, would look better and I would do a couple of them oops oh that looked actually kind of good too sometimes accidents turn out <laughs> to be pretty good so I would do a, another one maybe somewhere over here um, my lines aren't super good but adding just a little bit of uh, reflection in there I think would make it look pretty pretty awesome and then to make stuff look really really sharp I do like to go all the way white if I click this or even this I can tell you didn't go all the way white I would go all the way and just to make it look like it has a really really sharp edge I would go ahead and put that right there and there and now it just looks it just looks sharper you know that little edge right there makes it look sharper I think that the um, details you have here are actually too dark so I would I would lighten up these details because it almost looks like dirt or, or damage or dirt like let me, let me show you what I mean this right here because of there because there's specs it looks like dirt so it doesn't really make sense for it to be gray <clears throat> unless it's damage you know what I mean and this is damage to the blade and if it's damage to the blade then I would probably add some chips in here so I would do something like uh, oh there's a layer below that so to make it look like the blades damage I think um, there's a couple ways we could do it we could just have like this little triangle like that in the blade you see that and it and, it, and it, it looks like a chip or you could go and wait why is my eraser not working oh it's all in one layer <laughs> or we could go and really make it look like it's chipped like that so if it, I think that's a pretty fun way to do some damage um, also since these are squares that's what kind of makes them look more like dirt as well if you made them a little bit more you know a little bit different shapes like that it, it would look a little bit less like dirt chunks they almost look like holes you know what i mean they almost look like holes in the which it, it, it's fine if it was like bullet holes but it kind of doesn't make sense for an axe however i understand that could also be just an aesthetic kind of style uh that you want to go for but um i would probably not make these look so um so round I think I think stuff like this makes it look more like uh, like damage and honestly if we're talking about an axe it would probably get damage from other uh, sharp weapons so instead of having this sort of uh, shape for the for the damage I would just go for more for slashes I think slashes would look more realistic as damage in this thing and what I mean by that is just something just uh, lines going across like this you know that looks more like to me that looks more like damage uh, you would see on a blade an example of that let me uh, let me do one over here okay so maybe for some slash damage I would do something like that you know what I mean that's pretty a, a, a pretty strong uh, 
uh, shading though, I would I'm I'm gonna lighten it up a lot there. So I'd make it a, a little bit less. Um, yeah, I mean you might not think that looks good. Maybe I didn't draw it right, but I think you get my point with the damage being slashes, not these um, these like dinks, these ho holes. And if it is a dink, I would draw the dink a little different. Um, and look, look, it still looks cool. It still looks cool. I'm I'm just pointing out something that you know something that I noticed. So I don't know. That's an okay looking slash. Um, another way to do the slash would be to kind of maybe have the center be a little bit more open and um, honestly we probably don't even need that highlight maybe making it fade or having it sort of look like it trailed a little bit yeah I like that that looks like the the slash is a little bit uneven you know um, nah not not that I, mean, I think I think this is what I would go for something like that by the way, the software I'm using is called Asprite. There's a link in the description. I have a free to use art asset pack on itch and you can follow me on there so you know when I update the Sprite pack or release some free games. I was visiting my family in Slovakia, but I'm back now and I'll be uploading more frequently. Please, let's make it to that 100,000 subscriber mark this year. It would be a dream come true. I'm an indie game dev currently working on a game called The Last Phoenix. And I'm really going to need your support on the Kickstarter so that I can stay independent and actually, you know, have a career. Uh, YouTube, YouTube ain't paying the bills. Please follow the project. I think I need to get this number to like 400 or something before I launch the project. Or else I'll fail as an indie game dev, as a YouTuber, and, I, and my mom will be right. I'll see you guys next time. A dev live. I want to thank my Patreon supporters. You guys are amazing. I see you, Bush, Corey F, Benjamin, Pixel Pit.